Hey guys, welcome to a new tutorial today. Today we're going to be talking about curves in Adobe Photoshop. And I've got this image here of Mount Hood at Trillium Lake with a fisherman and a single bird flying off into the distance. Uh, the light was pretty good this morning that I went out and when I had originally shot at sunrise and arrived it was completely clouded in and we had no visible mountain. And then about an hour later it cleared up and we got some some really nice visible visible mountains guys so um, since we're going to be talking about curves a lot I just kind of wanted to give you a quick overview so in your adjustments layer over here we have the curves menu which is signified by a graph and it has a little like s curve from the top or the bottom left to the top right and so what this tool does is it kind of controls light you can shape it in any way you want and as you go from the bottom left, you are um, in the shadows, and if you go to the right and upper top right, you uh, get into the highlights or the lights of an image. So the way that you use it is you click on any point on the graph that you want to manipulate. So I'm going to click in the shadows, and as you see as I drop it, my shadows get darker. I'm going to hit Control z to revert that and I can do the same thing with the lights. I'm going to come up to the lights, I'm going to drop them and it's going to drastically reduce the lights. And if I push it up it's going to boost the lights or boost the shadows depending on what I want to do. Um, so we're going to start with that. So we're going to start by boosting some shadows. Uh, what I want to do is I really want to make this fisherman one of the focal points of the image. Obviously the mountain as well but it's already getting hit with light so it kind of has that already taken care of for us I'm just going to adjust it but so we're going to start with the fisherman and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have that curves layer open and I'm going to boost an area in the shadows right about here just a little bit and so I'm going to go over to a gradient tool on the left hand side where you can hit G as a hotkey I want to make sure that I go to the basics here and then I have the gradient that goes from white to black selected. So now I've got my gradient and I want to use a radial gradient. If you look up at the top here we have a linear gradient to the right is a radial gradient. There's an angle gradient which I never use. Reflected gradient we'll talk about later and diamond gradient another one that I just don't use. It's not very it's not very doesn't lend itself well to uses in landscape photography. At least I haven't found it yet. But anyway, we're going to make a radial gradient boosting the shadows in this curves layer over just the fisherman. And so I'm going to click at the center to start my gradient and then drag it outwards to where I want the gradient to fade off or to roll out. So I click that on and off. I have a little bit of a boost. And because I can see a little bit of a halo and it will be rendered later and look nicer. We'll take down the opacity of this later to maybe 79%. And that looks pretty good. So I'm going to click it on, click it off. Looks pretty nice. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to add some lights to the tree line and the fisherman right here because it's just kind of dark and there's a lot of nice fog in there and if we bring some lights in there it should do a really good job of making it pop. So I'm going to go back to another curves layer I'm going to click now near the right side because I want to boost the lights. I'm going to click a point there and I'm going to drag it up a little bit. Probably about right there. And I'm going to hit Control and I on my curves with my curves layer suggest or selected so that way I can invert it. I'm going to hit the gradient tool again which is a G and I'm going to this time use a reflected gradient which means where I start with the mouse up to where I end my point is where the gradient will be reflected within. So if I click on and off you can see I just affected the area with the fog, the fisherman, and the tree lines here. So that's off and that's width. And I'm going to reduce that a little bit too. So I'm going to go down to maybe 80%. And the reason you want to kind of reduce most of your layers in Photoshop is because the adjustments can look harsh if they're at full 100%. Um, it helps that we're using gradients here because it helps the gradient kind of fall off rather than just abruptly end and kind of show those adjustments. Um, but so we'll move on to, let's see, 
Next, I want to kind of lower the lights of both the sky and a bit of the bottom part of the reflection because right now it's, it's pretty flat looking and I want to greatly reduce that. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. Uh, by the way, you can hit Z to bring up your magnifying tool at any point and it will bring you right there and then you just click and hold drag to your left. You can zoom out, click, hold and drag to your right. You can zoom in. Uh, I use this a lot when I'm moving through photos just so I can quickly kind of navigate through without having to keep going back and clicking to the zoom tool. Okay, so now we're going to adjust the sky. So I'm going to go back to another curves layer. I'm going to click it and I'm going to take the lights right about here. You see this little peak that's indicating a, uh, and a tone that's being used frequently in this image. I'm going to click it. I'm going to drag it down so I'm satisfied about right there. Now it looks quite a bit and it's definitely a drastic difference, but we're only going to affect a certain part of our image. So I'm going to click on the curves layer, make sure that's selected. I'm going to go back to the gradient tool or hit G, select it immediately. And then I want a linear gradient. I want that reflected gradient again. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start at the sky and I'm going to end somewhere about this tree line. So I'm going to click at the top. or about right here actually at the top of the mountain. Start with my gradient there. That's where it's going to be 100%. And it's going to fade down to about the fog line below. And so let's look at the difference between before and after. Greatly brings back a lot of detail and contrast into the sky and the mountain itself. Um, just makes the sky look kind of a little bit alive. Now, I want to do the same thing but to the reflection. So rather than going through and creating another curves layer adjustment, I can right click this one, having it selected, the one we just did for the sky. Right click it, click duplicate layer, and I'm going to, you can name them, you don't have to, uh, but it can be helpful when you're going back through your edits to figure out what this layer was. So I'll put reflection, shadow, reduction. Don't mind my spelling, typos are not part of this tutorial. <laughs> so it made a, it made a duplicate, but it's, it's affecting the sky right now, and we want it to affect the water. So I can just go to my gradient tool, make sure linear gradient is selected again. And I'm just going to make a small gradient because I don't want it to affect the fisherman. So I'm going to start at the very bottom of the image, hold shift to make it straight, and I'm going to end it right about here at this tree line. And so that's the difference. A little subtle, but when you put the two together, suddenly we have quite a bit of light shaped here. Let's see, what do we want to do next? One of the things I'd like to do is add a little bit of contrast. Um, to these trees right here, I think they could pop a little bit more in this zone right here that I'm talking about. It's kind of hit by sunlight. So I want that to pop just a little bit more and I just want it to pop there. So I'm going to create a new curve adjustment layer and now we're going to make an S curve. And the way that you make an S curve in a curves adjustment layer is you bring up the brights. So I'm going to click a point near the brights. I'm going to raise it up a little bit and then I'm going to click a point in the shadows and I'm going to drop it down. So if I click it on and off, I can see that I, I definitely added some contrast, but I only want it to go to a certain spot. So to get there, I'm going to zoom in, and I'm going to move this to the side, and I'm going to go back to the gradient tool, and because I can, this is kind of a horizontal area, I can use the reflected gradient to make sure that it only affects uh, this area. So I've got my curves layer selected, I've got my gradient tool, I've got the reflected gradient. I'm going to start here because that's about the middle of these trees with the light. And I'm going to end just at the top of the mountain, or just at where the snow line is. And so that adds just a little bit of contrast right there. Alright guys, so we've done about five curves adjustments so far, and I just kind of want to show you what that looks like. So a nice easy way that we can get a before and after in Photoshop is select all of your layers. So the way that I'll do that is I'll select the bottommost layer by clicking it, and then I'll hold shift and click the topmost layer so they're all selected. Then if you go down to the bottom right, there's a folder icon, and that creates a group out of those. So now you can click one button to preview and turn off those adjustments. So, so far we've only done five curves adjustments, but it did drastic wonders for the sky. We brightened, uh, we brightened the area where the fisherman is. We darkened a lot of the, the uh, sky and mountain that was kind of a little bit overexposed because of the way that I had shot this. 
Um, so we're, we're getting a lot more detail back into this photo overall. So one of the next things we want to do is now that we've kind of done a lot of the curves, I'm going to move on to some, uh, some other tools. The levels adjustment is one of my favorite. The reason why is just because you can be very specific with the, the tones you want to adjust. So the one thing that I want to do is I want to open a levels adjustment and I want to do a levels adjustment to the whole photo. And what I want to do, and I'll just give you a little bit of background, the, it's kind of like the curves adjustment instead of from bottom left to top right, it is left to right. So the left side, if you move this slider to the right, it controls adding contrast and darkening the shadows. If you move the middle slider, it controls adding contrast to the midtones. And then if you move the, uh, the midtones or the bright slider to the left, you add brightness. So what I want to do is I want to add contrast to the midtones by sliding the middle slider to the right, probably about 0.87 there. That looks nice. And then I want to bring in just a little bit of contrast back without overexposing my mountain. If we do a little before and after, it does kind of a bit of wonders for the entire photo. Now it definitely made uh, my area below a little darker. And a way that we can fix that is we can go to the gradient tool. And I want to click on the linear gradient. I want to make sure that white is the foreground for my gradient selected color there. And I'm going to start at about midway of the mountain, hold shift so I get a straight line, and click to about the fog line right there. And then I have an effect at the bottom. And again, I can pull down that opacity just a little bit so it looks a little more natural. So I like the way that that looks. Um, the one thing that I do want to do now is I want to take some time to adjust the colors. I want to make it a little more blue and then the shadows and kind of add more of that, um, that first light pink red kind of glow. So the way that we can do that is we go to the color balance adjustments here. I'm going to click it and I want to affect the midtones. You have three options here, the shadows, the midtones, and the highlights. I find that when you adjust the midtones, you adjust a lot of the overall photo because a lot of photos are generally midtones. Um, and then we'll do some highlights as well. So I'm going to start with the midtones. What I want to do is I want to add some blue to them. If you see that I go to the left, it adds in yellow. As I go to the right, it adds a nice amount of blue. Now you don't need to do a lot here, so I'll usually use small increments of single digit numbers, some things below 10. Sometimes I'll go a little bit beyond 10. Um, but it just depends on on what I'm what I'm doing. So I like the way that that looks. It adds just a little bit of blue overall to the photo, uh, while keeping the gold in this this top of the mountain. And so now I want to adjust the highlights, and I want to add, like I said, a little bit of red in there to kind of emulate that first morning glow when you get the pinks and the reds in the sky. So I'm going to go to about seven, right there. And then I want to change the highlights as well, a little gold. So I'm going to go to about negative nine, keeping in those single digits. And I think that makes it look a little more natural. Before I can see there's a lot of green in here. Um, and now I can see it looks a lot more like more of a sunrise. Awesome. So now I want to do some specific masking to the midtones. I want to darken them just a little bit, which will help darken the sky, darken the mountain, and really make things a little punchier. So I have all these panels over here, as you can see, um, with just acronyms for what they stand for. Overall, this is a program called Raya Pro 5, and it's by Jimmy McIntyre. I'll link that below in the video to where you can find this. Uh, but essentially, it's, it's one of many plug-in options available that allows you to do things faster than you would with a lot of clicking and um, just processes in Photoshop. So what it does is it speeds up things for you and allows you to do things like Orton effects, um, dodging and burning in selective areas, etc. I mean, there's a, there's a ton of things in here and I can't recommend it enough. I, I use it all the time and it helps me really put specific highlights or darken certain areas in a photo. 
So what I want to do is I'm going to use the InstaMask feature. Uh, this is a great masking tool it's just so you can make selections and when you make those selections you can add an adjustment to them and kind of manipulate it really well. So I want to add midtones and this this is nice because it tells me B, D, and M and they'll stand for brights, darks, and midtones. So I want to attack the midtones and then you get a certain number of options and they just refer to strengths of how strong that mask is. So I'm going to click midtones 1 and it's going to be most of the image you'll notice, as, the, as I had said before. Midtones are pretty much a majority of an image. So I'm going to click on, I like number one. Um, the white that you're seeing in the image is what's being affected, and then the areas that are dark are the areas that are not going to be affected. And I can kind of further refine this here. This is like a, a mini levels tool within the masking selection. So if I bring the shadow slider, over the right, it's going to darken some of the shadows and make them not affected by this mask. So I like the way that this looks. I know that this is going to work well for what we're going to do. So I'm going to click on levels, and now I have a mask that is only affecting, uh, being affected with levels in the midtone area. So what I want to do is again my sliders here. The leftmost is shadows, the middle is midtones, and the right is brights. I want to bring the midtones to the right further to where I start getting a lot of color in that mountain. So about 0.79, so here's the difference so far. And then I'm going to bring the brights back up, so there's a little bit of contrast in there. So if I click on and off, it makes a lot of difference, and I'm still trying to make sure that I don't ruin those nice highlights that are here on the mountain. It's just as I did with the midtones, I want to do the same thing with the brights, and the brights are going to be uh, that even more brighter area here on the mountain that's almost kind of losing its color, I want to bring that back with a specific adjustment. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my InstaMask tool, and again, brights, darks, and midtones, I want to use the brights, so I'm going to click a brights 1, see what that looks like. And that, that selects a lot of the mountain that I really want in the sky, but I really want it to be a pretty selective mask. And number two is a, is a winner for me. You can see that the white here is mostly the mountain, a little bit of the fog below, and some of the sky as well. So I'm going to go ahead and hit levels again. I'm going to go right click this. Uh, if you notice that there's a, a little adjustment layer to the each left of each layer, you can double click on it and that brings you back into adjusting that layer. So what I want to do is I want to darken the darks bring in some contrast, same with the midtones, just a little bit, and then bring in a tiny bit, or actually, I'm not even going to touch the highlights, because as I bring them in, you can see that I lose a lot of detail. So I'm going to leave them over here, I'm going to keep going actually, until I get that just a little darker, right about there. So you can see I brought over my shadows, I brought over the midtones, and I didn't do anything with the brights to change those. And that's the before and after with that adjustment. And that one's a little strong, so I'm going to bring it down to about 78%. And that looks pretty natural so far. So there's a few more things I want to do. Um, I like the way that the, the sky looks. I like how bright the fisherman area is. Um, but now I want to do some finishing touches. So I'm mostly satisfied with this image with just a few, exception of a few things. Um, let's go ahead and sharpen. So, there's a lot of different ways to sharpen. Um, you know, there is a, let's see, there is a filter adjustment where you can sharpen your image. Um, but like I said, I have these panels here from Raya Pro and in there happens to be a nice sharpening tool. So there's many ways to sharpen it. Um, but I'm going to tell you about like the radius size that you can use. So I'm going to click on sharpen full. So it sharpens my whole image. So it comes up, and it comes up with a radius of 2.8 pixels. And so what that radius means is how large it's going to sharpen the areas. And the bigger the pixels, the more noticeable and um, kind of pixelated it will look. So just to kind of rule for me, 1.5 is kind of my golden zone. It makes it to where it looks really sharpened, but it doesn't really ruin the image and make it look overly sharpened. So if we zoom in, we can look and we can see that we have a really sharp mountain. So this is without 
and that's width. Big difference. Just a tip, as you hold spacebar and you have the zoom tool, you can move about the image, clicking on it and just dragging it about. But that sharpening did a wonders for everything around here. So turn it off, turn it back on. And you'll notice that sharpening can add a little bit of brightness or whites to areas. I've noticed that, uh, but it doesn't seem to affect the image negatively. So I'm gonna bring that down just a little bit because I don't want it to be overly sharpened. Uh, but now it looks it looks really nice. So I've got my sharpening done. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add an Orton effect. So pretty simple for using Raya Pro um, filters. It's under the Dodge and Burn panel, and you click Orton effect. There's several different kinds, but I just like a standard Orton. I don't need any fancy colors added to it. Um, and there's many different ways to make Orton effects. Um, you know, you can find a lot of tutorials on that online. Uh, but I find that using just the panel itself works great for me. And the main thing that's important here is the pixel size. Now, I've well, my favorite thing I've heard is that you want to use a pixel size that is half the megapixels of your camera. So, I have a D850 for Nikon. It is a 45 megapixel camera. So half of that is 22 and a half. Or you can just make it 22 or 23. So instead of 47, which is what the computer wants to do for me, I'm going to make it 23 pixels. And then an Orton effect always comes with usually a, um, a levels adjustment, and I'm just going to leave that the way it is. So it's just going to make it pop a little further. And so that adds a little bit of a dreamy effect to the image. It does take away from sharpening, so it's something that you want to kind of use, not sparingly, but you want to adjust the opacity of it. Because I like having a sharp image. I also like having a glowy image, but I'd rather have the details here. All right, so that's without, and that is with. and just makes everything a little softer, a little smoother, a little nicer. So the last thing I want to do, uh, I usually like getting things in camera, and I did get this bird in camera in this shot, but I want to move it to a better place in the mountain. I think it looks nice where it is, but it could go somewhere else, you know? So, first thing I'll do is... I will go ahead and make a merge visible of this. And now the way that I do that is I hold down Alt, Shift, Control, and E after selecting the topmost layer of my Orton effect here. So again, Shift, Control, Alt, E. It's going to make a new layer, and what it does is it puts all those adjustments that you just did together and it smooths them out. If you don't do that, your, your photo is going to look funny. You're going to have little vignettes of changing colors or um, areas where it doesn't look very smooth and um, like you may have edited it too much. So that's something that I, I had never done in my photos for about two, three years when I was starting. It really frustrated me that I didn't know that. So again, that was Alt, Shift, Control, and E for Windows users. And for Mac, it's Option, Shift, Command, and E. Okay, so now I have that layer nice and flat. And what I want to do is I want to move that bird. I want to move it about here. So how do we do that? Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that layer that we just made, and I'm going to right click, duplicate, and we'll call this bird movement. So I'm going to zoom back out. I'm going to go to the move tool in the top left. I believe V is how you select that. A hotkey. And then I'm going to change the the layer blend mode, which is I click this normal button with the pull down tab and I want to go to difference. When I move, uh, what it's going to do is it's going to show me the difference between the two images. So I want this bird somewhere about that notch right there. I think that looks really nice. So what I want to do is click that blend mode and bring it back to normal. Obviously that looks funny, um, but actually I'm going to change it to, to darken. I'll show you why. So I've got my blend mode to darken. I've got two layers on top of each other and it looks really goofy. But what I can do is I'm going to select the bird movement layer, click on a mask icon down here, which is add layer mask to that layer. And what I want to do is I'm going to get my brush tool out and I'm going to make it big enough to fit 
that bird right there. And now that I have this area selected and I have my layer mask selected, I'm going to invert it so I can brush in the bird. So I'm going to hit Control and I, or Command and I on a Mac. I'm going to brush in that bird right there, my white paintbrush. Just keep clicking it till I see it all the way in. All right, so that's with the bird and that's without. And you can see that I got just a little bit of the land. So to get rid of that, I go ahead and change this color to black because I want to take away from what I brought in. And if I just click over that area, smooth it out, you can double check I didn't miss anything by clicking this on and off. Oop. And now we've got the bird over there. Now the only problem is we still have a bird that is stuck on this layer. So clone stamp is going to be the best thing to get rid of this. So I'm going to go back to the layer one, the original one, without the bird being moved. I'm going to go over to the clone stamp, which is S for a shortcut. And I want to take an area that's really similar to the, where the bird's at, which is just right about here. The nice thing about this, this skyline is that there's a, it's a pretty smooth gradient, so I can easily take, um, take a clone stamping from one area and transpose it to another. So you have the clone stamp selected. You want to hold Alt, and you'll see that a, a, like a bullseye reticle comes up, and that means that you're selecting that area for the clone stamp to take from. So I'm going to left-click. Got my clone stamp selected. And then I'm going to keep clicking until it disappears. And I can't see any discoloration right there, so it looks looks good. All right, so that is here's with the bird in one spot, and the bird now transposed up to here. I just think it looks a little more powerful. Um, you know, it's a little fun, creative way that you can figure out how to move things within your frame because sometimes things show up in your frame, they don't line up perfectly, but you may want to put them there where they should line up perfectly. Um, so I like this. So now the last thing I want to do is I want to show you guys how to create a little light bleed from the right hand side just to kind of mimic as if there was some golden light coming in from the, the right side of this. So what I want to do is I want to add a new layer, which is create a new layer down here at the bottom right, right next to the trash can. So I click that plus sign and make sure it's at the top. And what I want to do is I want to grab a gradient tool again. But I want to come up to here and I want to make sure that I change the tool. You can see that we have three different types here, a white to black, a white to transparent, and then a black to white. I want the white to transparent because I want it to be a color and I want it to fade off into nothing. So I'm going to click on that gradient tool. I've got the linear gradient, or not the linear, but I want the radial. So I want to kind of mimic the sun. And the last thing I want to do is change my color. So if you click on your foreground color, whatever the color is in the, right here, um, the most prominent in front of the other, you will get an eyedropper tool. And you can click on areas within your frame and kind of select colors based off that way. So I want something that's a little gold and orange. And that's a good area right there. Now that's a little bit deep of a color, and I don't think that'll look very natural. So I want to move to the left somewhat. Not all the way to the left to where it's right, but right about here. So that way I still have some color retained in there. And now let's zoom out so we can make a big gradient. I'm going to select the gradient again. I've got my radial gradient. I've got it selected color to transparent. And so we're going to start all the way up here in the top, and we're just going to bring it to feather out and end there. So that's a little bit too much. I don't necessarily like exactly how that's looking. So let's try that one more time, just a little bit like so. So obviously this looks a little bit strong right away, but what you want to do is change that opacity layer down to about eh, maybe 35%. You can kind of see, and now it's getting a nice color cast over that side. It's really brightening it. Uh, it's making it look kind of like it's some golden light. I'm going to keep reducing that just a little further. But then that adds just a little bit of punch to that side and helps bring out the fisherman once more. Um, the last thing I want to do is darken the other side. So we'll go back to one more curves adjustment. So I'm going to click new curves layer. 
and wait for it to stop freezing. And what I want to do is I want to darken the lights again, but I only want to darken the lights on a side. So I darken that, but I want to invert my layer so that way I can paint in the area that I want darkened. So I clicked on my curves adjustment I just made, hit control, I to invert it, and then I'll hit B to bring up my brush. And you can go up here to change the size of your brush, uh, but I have a hard time getting that to be visually satisfying. So if you hit the uh, bracket to the left, you can increase your, your brush size or the bracket to the right that faces to the right, you can decrease your brush size. So what I want to do is I want to brush out kind of this side of light since we have the flooding incoming light that glow that we just made over here. And I just kind of want to kind of further shape how the light is seen. So I've got my white paintbrush selected, got my layer inverted so that way I can bring in the adjustment. And I'm going to start about here. And I'm just going to paint up to there to the mountain. Now it doesn't do so, uh, too much of a a, a great adjustment, but it just darkens it enough to where if you look at the two without each other, we kind of shaped the light and redirected where it's coming from. So because that was such a big adjustment and I brushed that in by myself, I want to make sure that I lower the opacity of that to maybe about 50%. Alright, so the last thing that I want to do before ending the image is making sure I make a merge visible layer of all of these layers above. So I want to hold control Shift, Alt, E, and again that's Command, Option, Shift, E for a Mac. That would make that all visible and makes it nice and smooth for all your adjustments. So, I'm going to show you the before. Here's before, moving the bird and everything that we did, shaping the light a little bit and bringing in that extra glow, and after. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video about curves. Um, I will link below the Jimmy McIntyre Raya Pro 5 panel that I was using to edit this video. If you guys enjoyed it, please like and subscribe for more tutorials and time-lapse footage. I do offer private lessons, and they are available at my website at dreamcapturedimages.com. I hope you guys all enjoy the week, and we're staying safe.